Welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu, and I'm really excited about today's guest. He is extremely successful, and he is a seasoned real estate broker and investor. He's got eight years of hands-on experience, but more than that, he's got mindset. Check out his um, social media. It's really fantastic. Got tons of followers and talking about habits and discipline and being coming an entrepreneur and how to perform at your peak level. So, Lucas, welcome. Hey, thank you for having me on the show today. Look forward to chatting with you, and and hopefully I can provide something of value to the audience. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love uh, it's all about leading with value, and um, um, yeah. So, tell the audience about your story and how you got started, and we'll go in go from there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, son of immigrants, I migrated here from Brazil as a kid. My dad cleaned boats, my mom cleaned houses, and and growing up, I mean, uh, finances were always an issue for as long as I could remember. Right, uh, Brazil at the time was a third world country, so coming to the states, having access to resources was always a priority to me, and simply because I wanted to help. I saw my parents struggle, and I wanted to. To, to solve that piece of the puzzle for them. Um, so yeah, we, we migrated here. I was a kid and, and dropped out of, basically barely finished high school, dropped out of college and got into, got into sales at a young age, got into real estate at around 22, uh, 22 when I was 22 years old, became a millionaire at 28. Uh, today I'm 31 and I have a, a real estate fund that has a little over uh, six million of assets under management. I have a real estate brokerage, the number one real estate team in all of Seattle. We do a little over 130 transactions every single year. Um, I own a ton of rental properties, and and I'm still actively buying and investing in real estate. And and you know I, quote unquote, living the American dream, right? So that's that's my story. Yeah, really, uh, very inspiring and. Usually entrepreneurs, um, and uh, Brazil is actually a very uh, one of the up and coming economy. One thing is talking about this um, this idea of um, life changing move to Seattle. Well, as, as I was reading your story, you know, Seattle. How did that change you? You know, how did looks like you found a lot of success in that market? Um, you know, to the audience more. Yeah. So when I moved to Seattle, I was nineteen, and I had. I was really young. I was just out of high school. And like most kids these days, there's a lack of clarity on exactly what you should do. Everyone pushes you to go the college route. But less and less kids are interested in going that direction. My reason for coming to Seattle is I simply I knew I needed change, right? I knew that my environment that was comfortable and safe wasn't going to get me to the next level. And in reality, I was still a kid, you know, and, and what it did for me is I kind of burned the boats because I didn't know anyone in Seattle, right? I didn't have any support. I told all my friends and family, hey, I'm going out to Seattle. So it kind of, it forced me to to burn the boats and take the island, right? Because I know I, I couldn't go back home. I know I couldn't ask for help. So it was a great maturity period for me in my life and and probably one of the best decisions I've made looking back now. So. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And um, there's, a, there's a quote, you know, when you burn all the boats, the universe aspires to help you achieve your goals. So, you know, you've had a really successful career in real estate and – one thing is talking about how to create habits and discipline that will change how you do business. I'm always interested in peak performance. Yeah. So, man, and, and I wish I was taught this at an earlier age. The bulk of what we do on a daily basis is pattern. And a lot of times we follow subconscious patterns that don't necessarily serve us. Or perhaps we follow patterns that have served us at one point in our life but no longer serves us. So I'm very aware and I'm very careful as to how I structure my patterns throughout the day. Not only habits, which are actions, but also mental patterns, right? The mental dialogues, the mental conversations that you have throughout the day. I found that for me, the thing that works best and for a lot of my clients as well is, 
is structuring and figuring out a morning process where you can get yourself to the highest and best mental, physical, and spiritual state to then go tackle the rest of the day, the business world, the, the job, the career, whatever the case might be. So for me, what that process looks like is pretty religious, is a 4.30 a.m. wake up time that I don't deviate from. My day starts at 4.30. Um, I go in right away, I go into to 10, 15 minutes of meditation and prayer. And this is my time to, to realign myself spiritually to, to God, higher power, whatever you, you choose to call it. From there, I'm in the gym at 6 a.m. and we do a hard workout. So I'm doing something physically. Or I've done something spiritually for my spiritual well-being. Now I'm doing something physical for my physical well-being. And by 8 a.m., we're in the office. So if you think about that, I've acquired so many small wins by the time I start my workday that that momentum of winning is a fact. It's harder. Momentum is a real thing for the positive or for the negative. So that's basically, you know, that, that's something that, that I try to, to preach to my coaching clients. And I think if a person just focuses on creating the perfect morning process, I, I think that could be a huge key to that person's success. You know, I love that. And, um, you know, talking to entrepreneurs these days, majority are they early to bed, like around eight, nine, eight, between eight to 10 and, um, they wake up really early, you know, what you're describing and uh, that gives them that, um, that mental edge and, and, um, and it's, it's just fascinating where there's like these, what I, what you were describing is these habits and patterns and being, being consciously, um, of those habits and patterns, which is my next question is, um, I was talking to this other guest and she was talking about the power of her group and her mastermind mm -hmm. and, as she burned the boats like you did, um, she was saying that she was consciously aware of, she became very consciously aware of who she associated with because she didn't want any negative influencers detracting because she was doing things against the grain and her friends and family held her back. And so she basically acquired this skill of pattern recognition. So talk to people about that, especially when it comes to the naysayers, haters, all that. So the world is not as it is. The world is as you are. So people tend to, to project and reflect their own insecurities into others. And that's just human nature in itself. I think, you know, it, for most individuals, and, and this is why the, the morning process and that meditation and prayer is so important, because if you do that frequently in, enough through months and through years, you start to realize your internal space that maybe sometime just don't serve you, right? So it, being aware of that for yourself first makes it easier for you to become aware of when other people are bringing around limiting beliefs, negative energy, or 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 something that doesn't serve you, right? And I, I've seen I've seen all high level producers to a certain extent they have awareness of these things, right? And that's why high level people tend to associate with high level people, right? Those, a, a high frequency energy simply does not mash well with, with a, a low frequency state. Those two don't, don't correlate well, right? Hmm. So I, I, I truly believe, and, and it's funny because I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't say necessarily I'm a religious guy, but over the last few years, I believe very much in, in, in energy. Right. And, and, and you could pick that up from other people and you could harness and create the right energy within yourself that will make it much easier for you to live an enjoyable life, for you to accomplish your goals, for you to to see the best in others and in yourself. So I, I think, you know, I think a lot of times entrepreneurs focus so much on the money aspect and the wealth aspect. But real wealth is that. Real wealth is is living in a in a high emotional state, even when the world is not perfect. Which, if you're an entrepreneur, you know the world is rarely perfect. There are always problems, but being able to rise above those problems in a high internal state is absolutely critical. Yeah, I love that, and it, I love that the way you said it. And the way um, I'm starting to view entrepreneurship is 
like a high level athlete, like, um, you know, these habits and these mindsets, you may not be, you know, you may not be, but your these high quality decisions, you know, could be small, all could be large scale. And you need that, you need that performance to be able to function at that high level, which is uh, the other, the other question. Um, entrepreneurship is not for the faint hearted. And you talk about how to solve your struggles, you know, the struggle is part of it and embracing it, teaching others to do the same, learning from it, expand that upon that. Yeah. So I, I, I think that everything in life to a certain extent is a trade-off. If you decide to get into entrepreneurship and you think you're not going to have any challenges or struggle or, or you're not going to have to reinvent the version of yourself, you're absolutely insane. It, it's, Anything in life that you want, there is a trade-off. For everything I've accomplished has expanded my life. Let's say more wealth or or a, a new level of business or a new level of fitness. There's an aspect of struggle in there. There's an aspect of comfort in there that you have to lean into in order for you to see the growth. And that's evolution. And that's healthy because what's the alternative right what's the alternative to evolution and growing it's you're you're diminishing right you're living less you're contracting and no one wants less of anything in life right everyone wants a better relationship not a worse one everyone wants more money not less finding that dance and that balance within yourself to where you're you're pushing yourself you're expanding your comfort zone but you're doing it without wrecking yourself into the ground. You know what I mean? And that is the challenge because I see a lot of entrepreneurs push really hard and they maybe do so for a year or two years and they're sick of it. How do you stay in the game for eight to nine years continually growing? How do you stay in your, how do you stay in your area for 20, 30 years expanding and, and happy and fulfilled? That's the real sweet spot, you know, and, and, and that's an internal game. So. Yeah. yeah, it's ninety percent mental, you know, ten percent execution. How do you how do you encourage entrepreneurs to find their area of genius? You know, help others flourish, do well. Um, how do they? It's like a you know, the the traditional route really doesn't allow you to do that. So how did you do it? Yeah, I think for me, so when you're starting out, you have to say yes to a lot of different things. Um, and you have to see what things you naturally gravitate towards. I, I think if I were to redo it today, like, I mean, there's a certain logical aspect when you're starting a business where you have to look at, okay, what's the, what's the upside of this business? You know, like if I'm starting a business today, am I going to go into newspaper? Probably not the best businesses. It's on, it's on the decline, right? So when I got started in real estate, like it was pretty basic. I've noticed, well, most millionaires became so through real estate. I'm going to go do that. And sure enough, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly easy sector for you to reach your first million in. I think being, a, I think trying out different things, being comfortable with failing initially, small failures, right? If you could take these small failures that don't break you at the start until you find something that you naturally feel some traction towards, and then when you do feel that traction, I think the, what most people miss is you figure out you want to be in this sector. The very first thing you should do is go hire the best person, the best mentor, the best coach you could possibly afford in that sector. And if you could find a free mentor, a free coach, someone that's, that's close to you, that's willing to really take you under the, their wing, even better. Right. And you want to find a person that has literally accomplished what you're looking to accomplish. That is the easiest way for you to find success in any area of life. Yeah. That's like, it's, that's like some of the best advice is find people that are doing what you want to do. And, um, you know, of course, you know, sometimes it costs thousands, ten thousands of, you know, 20 of dollars. Um, but, um, you know, most people don't want to pay that and that's why they, but, uh, if you do, you, if you put in the work, you, you definitely see the results. So, um, 100%. and also on that note, one thing that I've noticed is when I was starting out, um, and I had no money, it was easier to find mentors. 
once you get to a certain point, you will have to pay for mentors. You will have to pay for access. It's just the way it is. If, if I'm a multimillionaire and I want to get to a hundred million, um, the best person for me to learn to how to get to a hundred million is a person that has gotten to a hundred million. Well, that person's not going to be found at your local bar. You know, <laughs> access to that individual is usually very difficult because that's a person that's in high demand. So normally the only way for you to get access to higher level people as you grow is either by having a great network or by paying for access. And when I noticed for me is, I mean, I still have mentors and coaches to this day and I always will. I've paid for masterminds that are, that are $35,000 a year for a mastermind. And I've gotten 10 X the value out of it, right? Simply because of the people that I met, the knowledge that I've learned. And what happens is when you pay that money, you pay, I cut a check for 35. Do you think I'm going to sit in in every single meeting? Do you think I'm going to take notes, ask questions? You're damn right. You know, now <laughs> what, if was, what if it was free? Would I be as engaged? Probably not. You know, so I think to a certain extent, paying for mentorship, paying for, for coaches gets you more bought in to what you're looking to accomplish. And you need that. Yeah. And I love that. And it's almost like, you know, as opposed to trading your time and kind of failing and floundering, you know, you, you basically have resources, financial resources, and you allocate it accordingly. And so it's kind of like that those resources help you to fast track your way to success. It's um, it's like that's, what you're that's exactly it. And on a quick note, think about why these tech companies are so successful. They get to hire the smartest people and put them to work on a project at scale. They solve problems way quicker, way faster, which then allows them to make way more money, right? It's brilliant. It, and so you could do that in your own level, in your own scale, figure out a, an area of life that you're looking to improve, go out and hire the best person you could get access to in that area and solve that area. If it's money, go out and hire a financial coach or a business coach. If it's fitness, Go into the gym, find the, the most jacked individual you could you could find and say, what do you do? Tell me exactly what you do. Take my money. Hold me accountable. And you'll get results. I love that. And as we kind of uh, as we um, come to the conclusion, one thing is um, what are your keys to success and how can people contact you? You have a large social media following uh, on Instagram and YouTube and tell people how they can find you and contact you. Yeah. So. In regards to your first question, the key to success, um, it's if you just keep hammering on something over and over again, if you find a process that works for you, you find something where you're gradually improving yourself and you just don't quit, you will achieve whatever you're looking to achieve, right? If you, if you get crystal clear about what you want, you figure out these are the actions that will get me to that thing. And you just repeat that for as long as it takes, you will achieve your goal. Now that's mundane. It's not sexy. It's not exciting. People are looking for abs in 30 days, 90 K in 90 days. They're looking for quick results and any substantial success that usually doesn't come overnight. There's usually a lot of work that's done in the background before you see the overnight success, but learn how to fall in love with the process and stick to it. Um, you can find me on Instagram. Instagram is usually the best place. Uh, my Instagram is Luke L underscore is underscore winning. Luke underscore is winning. Feel free to send me a message uh, in regards to anything. I'm an open book. I'm always looking to help. And yeah, you could find me there. And uh, really inspiring podcast and so many nuggets of wisdom. Um, and for all the audience out there, uh, Lucas's resources will be in the links and show notes and be sure to check them out. And with that, thanks so much for coming onto the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me until next time.